The boat has been moved to Melbourne, Florida. It's a KMW fabrication. I measured the boat and made drawings and KMW is going to fabricate an aluminum rack to hold solar panels on the back of the boat. This is the rack that's been fabricated to the dimensions of the drawing that I made. KMW does welding, CNC milling, CNC plasma cutting, they have a lathe, they have manual milling machines, they have a welding robot, but all the welding on the solar frame yeah, this is, the is last time going to be tape welded here. by hand. This is one of the plates where the rack sits on the deck of the boat and it was cut out from using a drawing it was cut out on their plasma cutting machine. The aluminum is anodized, so every place that we weld something, we have to grind through the anodizing before we can weld it. Here Yusuf is welding gussets that will stiffen the frame where the legs meet the horizontal part of the frame. This makes it a lot stronger where, um, where the legs attach because mega yachts will come by and rock my boat with their weight and there's going to be a lot of weight sitting on top of the solar rack. So these gussets stiffen it up there to keep it strong. It's going to be under a lot of stress. Here's how the frame gets onto the boat. This was a test fit to see if the rack was the right size as of my drawings and also to measure for where the legs attach the rack to the rest of the boat. I'm on the boat guiding the forklift and the rack will be moved into the position where it's going to be. It was important that no part of the rack or solar panels was higher than the windshield on the flybridge of the boat so that the boat could pass underneath power lines and bridges and things like that while on its trailer. After the test fit, there's a few little things are being welded we back the boat into the bay door of the welding shop. As you can see, it just barely fits through the bay door with the door rolled all the way up. This way we could work in the shade a little bit and we didn't have to move the welder outside. Again, grinding through the anodizing where we're going to weld gussets on. Here I hold the gusset in place while Yusuf finds a comfortable position to weld. And so pack the gussets on. And then I won't have to hold them while he does the final weld.
So once the welding is done, we attach the feet of the rack to the boat with some long lag screws that went into the balsa core. And there's a lot of 5200 that's underneath each of those plates where the rack sits on the deck. And once that 5200 hardens up, that should be strong enough to keep the rack from sliding off the side of the boat. Now the boat is back at my house and I'm attaching the solar panels to the rack using something called T-slot or T-channel extrusions. A company called 80 slash 20 is a supplier of this in the United States but there's various companies that make it and sell it. Um, there's special T-nuts that go in the channel on these extrusions and then things can bolt to the extrusion using the T-nut that's trapped in the little channel on the extrusion. Here I'm using the solar panels themselves as a spacer in order to get the T-slot extrusions in exactly the right spot. The panels come with things called Z brackets and they normally screw into wood and I'm using the panels to force the T-slots to be just the right distance apart and parallel to hold the panels. Then I'm going around and doing all my final drilling and bolting through of the T-slot. And now I wire the panels from underneath. The connectors for them are pretty nice. They just snap together and they're polarized so that you can't put anything the wrong way around. And then I had to buy a whole bunch of stuff for the power system on the boat. Those big brown boxes are for my deep cycle batteries. I got four 100 amp hour 12 volt maintenance free deep cycle batteries. So I can store about four kilowatt hours of energy from the solar panels. For the most part it makes enough. There's, there's my charge controllers. There's circuit breakers going in from the panels as well as out to the battery bank. And I just destroyed this small inverter by trying to start the air conditioner with it. I think it should have been big enough, but I'm replacing it with this much larger inverter, 12,000 watt peak surge. <laughs> that ought to start my air conditioner. This inverter, it makes a modified sine wave as opposed to the pure sine wave that the inverter I just blew up used to make. And I was a little bit concerned whether the modified sine wave would run the air conditioner very well, but this thing works like a champ. Uh, the air conditioner used to make sort of a bump when it started when I was running it from a long extension cord from my yard. And it also made a little mini brown out for a second while the compressor was starting. But this new inverter starts it right up without even a bump. I'm taking a lot of these panels off of the boat. They actually hide wiring channels. All the original wiring on the boat goes through these channels so they're hidden and 
it looks a bit nicer. So I'm trying to run as much of my own wiring through the same hidden channels as they did when they first built the boat. So here you can see how the wiring goes through here. That's a big bundle of wires that goes up to the bridge. This bunch of wires is going back to the engine bay. There's also a wiring channel that goes across here and into what was the rear cabin, which is really convenient for me because this is where my charge controller and battery charger and inverters and all that sort of stuff is. And this is where wires go through up to the bridge. This was useful for me because I ran some really fat wires from my new battery bank all the way up to the helm. So they could go to a switch and then from the switch forward to a winch on the front deck that can raise and lower my anchor. The boat didn't come with an anchor windlass, but I decided it was a good idea because I could drop and raise anchor while still controlling the boat. So there are my wires going through there. So I was a bit concerned about all the wires that went through this slot here next to the rear counter. As the boat moves around, the edge of that counter could chafe a little bit. And I really didn't want that. When I first built the counter, I put in this foam. It's insulating foam for air conditioning pipes and I added some more here where all the wires go past the counter as sort of chafe protection this way the wires rub up against the soft foam and not the harsh edge of the countertop and so that's it the electrics on the boat.